Hey guys, in this video, we are going to be talking about Oblisk or Gabions and installing barbed wire. <laughs> our channel this is Doug Doug's head looks giant mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not really I'm just standing behind him and I'm Carrie we bought property in May of 2020 after we sold our house and most everything we owned and left Denver and moved here to southeast Arizona and Cochise County where we bought 40 acres of homestead off-grid property and we're just getting going on developing our homestead so You'll learn a lot if you follow our channel, and we'd be honored if you would follow along. Well, he was walking across the road chasing that beetle, and uh, when I came up, he popped his little head in the hole. So we got our first five wires strung on our first side, and we learned some stuff that we did wrong. <laughs> We did a couple things wrong. First of all, what we decided to do when we did this fence was we wanted it to be kind of like field fencing where it was closer together at the bottom and the, the space, the gaps between the wires got bigger as you went up. And we did that because the two things that we're trying the hardest to fence out are cows and javelina because we heard the javelina will go after your dogs. So what we, the first mistake we made was doing our measurement from the top down because we have a lot of rock along this property line and there's several posts that are not all the way in and we're not gonna be able to get them all the way in because we're not willing to rent equipment to do that. <laughs> we don't wanna pay for that. So what we're doing around the poles that are not in as far as we'll be building the rock gabions. Anyhow, we started our measurements from the top down and what we should have done was we should have gotten a piece of PVC that's the same length as this and measured out our measurements and then used that as a guide from the bottom up. We think it would have worked a lot better if we would have, if we would have had that pole because then we can adjust it up and down with the pole as we needed to. All right, so the second thing that we did wrong that we learned is we were we were kind of doing these fence T-post clips wrong and there's a better way to do them and I'm going to show you how we do them here in just a sec. Carrie's up there stringing the, stringing the wire. We've got some loose spots on this fence but we do plan on going back and doing certain techniques to tighten this baby up. Hey good morning. So we're back working on the fence today. The weather finally cleared up enough and stopped raining and we were able to get through on our road. So we're working on the fence and we wanted to just talk to you about a couple of reasons why we're doing a fence and why the fence needs to get done before we move on to the property. There's really, we're all really three main reasons. The first reason is that we're fencing out livestock. So Arizona is a fence out state. So livestock has the ability to freely wander on anywhere basically and graze unless you fence them out. So the first the first thing for putting this fence in is to keep the livestock out. And the second reason is to keep unwanted people out. <laughs> and that can be people that we just don't want on our property at all. It could also be something friendly like a hunter who is trying to get, trying to get to, they keep eating this grass and they keep throwing it up. But anyway, it's to keep out the hunter that is coming through trying to get to state lands to hunt legally hunt on they can actually do that they actually can go through your fence people think that if you have a fence up that you're protected from people trespassing but you actually have it have to have it no post or posted so what that means is you have to have a no trespassing sign on your fence it needs to be posted every quarter mile along your fence on the outside of your fence. So this is the outside looking into our property. It needs to be facing this way so people can see it as they walk up. 
and it has to be every quarter mile it has to be on every corner of your property so if your property is shaped like that you'd post it here 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 and here and it also has to be at all your entrances so whatever gates you have coming onto your property you also need to have no trespassing posted there so we're going to continue along this fence line we're stringing the fifth row of barbed wire today and then we're also installing our fence stays you can see them they're halfway through and we'll show you how we're doing that also carrie's putting on some c clamps now to pin the barbed wire to the post and it's basically got a u u shape on one side more like a upside down u shape on the other side and the idea here is just to twist them both together so that it forms pressure on the t-post and i guess you want to have it a little bit loose you don't want to tighten these down too tight yep so i go underneath the wire with both the little loops this side has a longer tail to it so it's a little easier to work with and then I use my fence tool, fencing tool, and it's kind of awkward because this is in the way, so I have to kind of do it sideways, but I just essentially clamp it, clamp the little V, and then twist it around the wire until it is tight. So sometimes it's an awkward angle, but this one's kind of probably the hardest one because of the distance of the wire above it. So that should be good, I think. There we go. All right, so that's holding that nice and tight. And we're gonna go ahead and put our fence stay all the way through so that it keeps the spacing correct. We have a new system now. So we had these one clamps, these one clips to hold the barbed wire. You can see they got two horns on them and they wrap around. I actually like this system because it really makes it nice and snug to the T-post. But we ran out of those clips and we had to order the other ones because they weren't in stock. So now this is allegedly an easier method. It's made for mass producing these. Uh, but we got these ones now. So these ones, the idea is that they just go around the T-post and then you take your drill with this special chuck on it and you zip it in well the problem is is this system also doesn't make them tight to the t-post so is what you're supposed to do is run this line of barbed wire the full length and stretch it on a post right and then you come back and you just drill these on and it holds them in place but it doesn't keep them tight right unless your whole entire length of your barbed wire is tight. So we're gonna kind of rig this a bit and just try to finish this length without going through any extraordinary measures and then we'll deal with that new system when we do the other two sides. And it's okay if this is a little bit loose now cause I'm gonna go back and tighten everything up. When I do perimeter walks and everything, I'll go ahead and tighten this wire up just a little bit because it will sag eventually with age um, that's just a ongoing maintenance that you're gonna have to do with a barbed wire fence so Carrie's gonna screw these these poles essentially just screw down it's like a spiral screw and she'll lift up on the fence just enough to so it doesn't sag when she's pushing down putting pressure downward on these uh, different wires and uh, it just, it's good because it straightens all these wires together if there were any flaws. And it just makes a rigid, rigidity out of this fence. So it makes it a little more uh, uh, effective against the deer pressure and stuff like that. Cow. Yeah, it's definitely more stable. And I, at the very bottom, we just take one of the little tails and bend it up. And then that just makes it so that you can't easily pull it out. Yeah. But these are easy to take apart. We can take them apart at some point and uh, tighten up the fence. We got a couple loose T-posts, but these are all gonna get carns eventually. But not all this has to be done at once. We're just getting the perimeter fence, our zone five fence up. And uh, eventually when we have other time, we can go back and, and make everything semi-perfect. 
but right now we just want to get the wire up we want to get the no trespassing signs up and uh, this will hopefully leave that that uh, deer and cow pressure that may be trying to get into our zone five because eventually we just want our own livestock in here if we go that route and that's just the way it is <coughs> keep on going up this fence and over the hill and we'll get one side done today at least. So we're going to show you a little thing that we've been working on up here. We've been talking a lot about it but uh, and we're kind of going to discuss what we've been doing on this video, but you can see that thing sticking up over here. That's one of the carns we've been talking about. Gabion. Gabion carns. There's a lot of names for them. I just call them obelisk. <laughs> like the Egyptians, right? But it's not that. It serves multi-purposes. Frames in the background makes it look beautiful. Uh, we're not going to put them everywhere. We're just really putting them where the where the weak points are in the fence for now. But these things you could probably damage your car if you try to push one over with it. Pretty sturdy, probably a thousand pounds. Uh, not quite as tall as me, probably five and a half feet tall, but that is loaded with a lot of weight. But we are gonna put some down there along that hill where we have a couple T-posts that wouldn't sink into the ground properly because of the stone we have up here. And we're gonna end it at that one there. We're not going down any farther on that side because nobody will see it anyways. But the, all the T-posts are sunk in pretty good on that side of the hill anyways. So today we are gonna be making our ga or some gabion basket or gabion posts. That's what we're going to call them, gabion posts. And gabions are actually a very, very old construction method. You'll see it in many ancient civilizations. And we're using it because it's very readily available to us. We have rocks all over the place and they're free. So what we're doing is we're put the T-post went in first and then we strung the barbed wire. You can see it's already strung. And then we'd use this five inch concrete mesh it's the kind of mesh that you would use on a subfloor but it came in a roll and we thought that would be good because it's pretty stiff to work with and it retains the shape of the circle so what we did was we we these are six feet around so six foot circumference basket posts whatever you want to call them and we just ended up cutting two three foot pieces of this stuff it's five foot tall and um like we said, five inch squares, and then we just wire it on the open side. So we just take those two three foot pieces and put them around the fence, and then we wire up where it connects on each side, and then we fill it full of rocks. So the other thing that we do though is, you can't see it on this one, we'll show you on the next one that we make, but Doug was taking wire and stringing it from the post to the mesh after we get it installed. And that keeps it from shifting, you know, any which way, um, and hopefully will help in keeping it straight and true. We are talking about possibly adding concrete, um, just kind of like pouring really thin watered down concrete down through the top. We'll see if we end up doing that. This may be enough. They're pretty solid. I mean, <laughs> They're solid. So anyway, that's what we're gonna continue doing. We're not doing them on every T-post. We're just doing them on the T-posts that didn't go in the ground all the way because of the rock. And um, we're gonna start building our next one so you can see us doing it in action. Our morning routine. Grabbing our gear and gonna walk up our makeshift path that we made on the top of the hill and we're gonna go finish this one side of the fence finally. Lots of things are keeping us 
from just banging this out but you know what we can't really do anything anyways right now so working on the fence is very logical All right, so we want to show you how we put together our gabion baskets slash fence posts. These We're using these as our brace posts because we have so much rock. So we're using this, it's called concrete mesh. We bought it at Home Depot. I can't remember what it cost, but it wasn't too awfully expensive the rolls are really heavy i think i think it's a 150 foot roll and the little squares we did the five by five squares because we can use kind of bigger rocks in this they build quicker that way and we bought the mesh on a roll and we bought this because we wanted it to rest it's actually been sitting out for a few three weeks about and we want the rest to happen because we want that to kind of blend in with the rocks and just kind of looks a little bit more rustic and like it's been here for a while. So the stuff is actually pretty easy to work with. We just, it's five foot wide and we're just rolling out six foot lengths and our circumference of our gabion basket post, like we said earlier, is six feet. So we're going to show you exactly how we put these together. So we've got our tape measure and then we're using, um, I think these are like 14 inch bolt cutters to cut, sorry, we're using like 14 inch bolt cutters to cut this and it works really well. So. Six feet right there. So it works out really good with these. I got it. Oh, we're doing three feet. Okay. So we're actually going to cut two three-foot pieces. And we're doing that because the barbed wire is already up, so we can't put a full circle basket around it. One side of the barbed wire would get, in, well, they would both get in the way. So we're cutting two three-foot half circles, and then we'll just put it around the basket, and then we'll show you. <laughs> so the first one, three feet right there. You have to be careful because this stuff is pretty stiff and it will snap back up once you get the cut. So I'm going to stand on either side so it doesn't snap back. Alright. You're going to see us actually using gabion baskets in a lot of areas on the property and not just for our fence line but we're also going to be putting these in for our entry gates we're going to be using that um, and what, what we'll do is we'll be putting a beam inside of the basket and then building the rock up around it and then that bas that beam will be facing the driveway and that's where we're going to install our fence um, onto, or not our fence, our gate. So that'll be the gate hardware will be on that post. So we're also going to use it around some of the washes. It's a way to help control the water. And with that, you make kind of, it's less of a, a circular post and it's more of a, more of a square or a rectangle shape. So we'll be doing that to help with the water control on the property and kind of directing the water where we want to go. So you can watch us do lots of things with Gabby on baskets. Those are our resident man-eating ants. <laughs> they are super aggressive. And when we were pounding T-posts near these guys, they got really PO'd. Doug got bit like four times. I got bit a couple times and it hurts. I don't know if these are fire ants or if they're just a for, uh, an aggressive type of ant, but their bites hurt. Our dog, um, Willow, we think got bit by one yesterday, and Zoe's been a couple, t bit a couple times also. So 
they're not fun to work around. It's weird because they're the, like the smallest thing on the on the property. <laughs> So, I tried talking about this before. Um, there's a sensitive group or generation that's growing up now that believes that all of our ancestors are wrong and guilty is charged without actually putting their mindset into the context of how these people grew, grew up or moved out here, what the situation was and they put up fences. But this new group thinks that it's just like marking their territory, pissing on their land, and we're just taking it from everybody, putting up fences and keeping others out. But you know, there's real purposes behind fences. And it's to keep livestock in and predators out and other livestock in so they don't interbreed and stuff like that. And, and uh, <clears throat> This new generation, they just don't get it. They want to blame everybody that was in the past because it's an easy target, right? Because nobody's around to defend themselves anymore. Like our ancestors, the forefathers and all that good stuff. We're, we're seeing these generations just say that everything that they did was wrong and racist and all this other good stuff. And anybody that knows true history, anybody that's ever read history, whether you believe that history is tr true or not, or skewed or whatever, uh, there is this generation that is being, in my opinion, brainwashed into thinking like this, that we need reprimands on our past ancestors. And even though most people can't trace themselves back to that generation, but uh, fences are needed. It's not just pissing on your territory. It's infrastructure that's necessary. And, uh, and we chose to go with the fence. And there's also uh, another big fence going on right now, and it's on our southern border. Some of us agree with it, some of us don't. The only problem I have with a big old fence going around our, it's like the Hadrian Wall in England, right? It was made to keep the invaders out, but it also kept the people inside, you know? You need extra passports and all this other stuff just to get out of the country now. So, my opinion, it's much more worrisome to me that we are building a wall because if I ever want to get the hell out of this place, I'm not going to be able to because there's going to be a big wall on my way, right? <laughs> but uh, that's just my two cents. So, you know, Kerry's talked about how we already had the barbed wire up, right? So we can't just set a carn over top, a gabion on, on top, and just go from there. So we're gonna sandwich it in between two of them. And we left this little lip on here. If you can see this little lip, which I can intertwine here and weave it in basically. And that will be solid enough to hold this up. And to level it after, I can put a few rocks under the low spots here and balance it up and level it. So this post, as you can see, it's barely in. I actually got rocks holding it up. We do have a post over there that's in the ground firm. We have a post down here too that's in the ground firm. So this one just needs to be secured so it holds this baby up, right? So that's what we're gonna do right now after I get my gloves. Carrie and I were also thinking, you guys were watching us cross our fence line, right, and grab rocks. Well, we're not actually trespassing because this fence is actually a good 20 feet in from our actual true property line. So we're getting rocks on this side because we know we're not going to hang out over there. But this is technically our property for another 20 feet past this fence. So I just wanted to make that clear. We're not rock thieves or anything like that. <laughs> We just figure we're gonna use these rocks on this half for developing pathways and making like fire uh, uh, fire circles and stuff like that and other things. But 
this 30 feet right here that's ours we'll just gather this because we're not going to be over here anyways much um, maybe with an atv or something one day but we're going to gather rocks from this side of the fence which appears to be us trespassing but it's actually still on our property just wanted to clear that up for all of you that have very keen sense of observations <laughs> show both sides they get the gist i'm sure that are so this wire here is pretty the same gauge as this and i'm just taking it and creasing it up to the edge and then up and under and the rocks will lay on these wires and make it super strong the rocks are going to lay on this wire here and tighten it up and keep it from going anywhere but i'm just going to go ahead and fold these up and under and some are going to go over and under but making it varied makes it stronger. But yeah, these are going up much faster than I expected they'd go up. And like I said, if uh, we want to level this, which we're going to, we're going to shimmy rocks underneath the low spots. Are the instances that stupid? That's the one thing that gets me is when they try to explain every little thing, then it's common sense. Common sense, I don't think, needs to be explained. And if you assume that, then maybe you should be trying to reach for a different crowd of people to watch your videos. I think people appreciate that they have a sense of knowledge, that you're not just the ultimate sense of intelligence on the planet. That's why I hate those how-to videos. They're just like, I don't mind a little explanation, but not full-blown treatment like a re- Oh, well, oh. And this, until, until we get some rocks in here, this is not gonna be level. So the rocks are gonna pull this post this way. And the more weight we get on it, then I can let go of this post and let it relax and it shouldn't go anywhere. But yeah, if we start dumping rocks in there while I hold this. Thanks so much for watching today and sticking around till the end. We want to share that we just made a huge purchase and would love to hear what you think it might be. It's a much needed homesteading thing and we want to know what you think we bought. So put it in the comments below.